Uh, hello folks, I'm going to talk to you today about this contraption here. This, uh, what this is, is this is a ALU, or Arithmetic and Logic Unit. Um, if you're familiar with CPU design, or if you're not, what this basically is, is this is the, uh, pretty much the heart of the CPU. Its main job is to combine values um, according to given control parameters. So you can see here I've got these, in, this input, um, this array of inputs over here. Um, called the A input, this array of inputs here called the B input, um, and then these these red wool lines, so there's a bunch of units, right, you can see there's like about eight of these units, because this is an eight, right, there's these boxes here, there's about eight of these units, um, and then running parallel to the units themselves are these red wool control lines, which define the operation, um, there's, let's see, I think not nine of them, so these nine control lines in combination with the nine, or with the eight, uh, I guess eight input A and eight input B, uh, results in these eight uh, output bits here. Um, so this is, this is an eight bit ALU. Uh, little demonstration before I get started and how it works. Um, I'm going to Click this guy off. Click this guy off. Alright. So you can see if, if you know binary, uh, this input is 3 here, right? This input's 3. And I'm going to swing all the way over to the accumulator over here. You can see this output is always a 0, right? None of the lines are on. And the ALU, with these, con what these control lines are telling the ALU to do, is to add the inputs, right? So it adds the input. A to input B. Um, now what this button does is it latches the output of the ALU into these latches here really quick um, so that the input can't change, right? So I'll push the button and you'll see this 3 here because zero, 0 plus 3 is 3. This 3 here is going to jump over into the latch, uh, into the series of latches, um, and it's going to become the new B input. Push the button. See that? It was, it was quick, uh, but you saw the pistons came down and 3 was locked into the ALU like that. Or into the accumulator like that. This is, this is called the accumulator. Um, and so now you can see that 3 is the B input, um, 3 is still the A input, and 3 plus 3 is 6, as it's telling us right here. 3 plus 3 is 6. Uh, so I'm going to do that one more time, and we should hopefully get 9. Um, because the 6 is going to come in to the accumulator, uh, then 6 is the B input, 3 is the A input, and then we should hopefully get 3 plus 6, which is 9. So I'm going to hit the button one more time, cross your fingers, there we go, 9, just like that. Uh, and I can, I can keep doing this, um, so that's 12, let's, let's go to 15, right, 15's all ones at 16 minus 1, right? One more time just for uh, for fun. There you go, 18. So, um, now that you've seen it in action, uh, at least for a simple operation, just talk a little bit about how it works. Um, uh, as you can see, let's see, if I go up really high, um, and it also set my field of view to something really low, overhead view. Uh, you can see there's the A input. It comes to this, you might recognize this from my other video, this is an XOR gate. It comes to this XOR gate, and then this XOR gate, and then this one, and then this one, uh, right there, and then out here. Um, so these first two XOR gates, well this first row of XOR gates um, is, an, is an inverter. So if this control line is high, then it inverts all the input bits, right? Um, if this control line is high, to this series of XOR gates, this is an incrementer. So the the control line doesn't go all the way through. Uh, it's instead used as the carry input of a series of half adders, which um, functions as an increment if the carry input is one. So you've got an inverter, an incrementer. Um, if you're familiar with whose complement, you might know where I'm going with that. 
Uh, and then this here, this these two XOR gates here, and you can see I've uh, I did the trick where I uh, tap off the gate here uh, to make an well, I tap off this one to make an AND gate, I tap off this one to make an AND gate, and then the two combine that forms the carry input. So this is a full adder, uh, these two XOR gates with the uh, I guess implicit AND gates uh, combined. Uh, form a full adder. So the chain of full adders, this um, forms an adder, and uh, these four control lines basically disable different parts of the gate to uh, allow this to also do operations such as logical or, logical and, um, and even logical exclusive or, um, even though that's not in the instruction set uh, I'm designing. And it can also just pass through the A input, like if, if you want to just load in a value into the accumulator. Uh, you can also configure these flags to just pass a value through, which is nifty. Uh, and then this last set here, so this isn't an XOR gate. Um, it's pretty obvious what this does if you kind of just peek at it for a little bit. This is a shifter unit, so I'm going to zoom back out. This is a shifter unit, so you can see if uh, this line is high, uh, then this input gets cut off. Um, this input gets cut off and sent there. This input gets cut off and sent there. This input gets cut off and sent there. So what it's doing is when this line is high, um, all the output bits from the the outer here are being shifted to the right one. And this line is the same thing, but in the opposite direction. This shifts all the bits um, coming out left one. So this is this is a shifter unit, uh, and that shift operation is modeled after the uh, uh, 6502, the MOS 6502. You couldn't specify a shift amount; you just you had one bit shifts in either direction, which is still useful by itself. Uh, and then, so this is left shift, this is right shift, and this is logical shift. Uh, if we zoom all the way over here, logical shift. If you if you sh shift right do a logical shift right, that's also unsigned shift is what it's called, um, then the, the top bit becomes zero unconditionally, because that's the sign bit. So you can see here, if this line is high, then this piston comes down, and it blocks the input, becomes zero. Um, if this line is low, you can see the input just passes through, uh, becomes the, the most significant output bit, um, which has the effect of being arithmetic shift, which preserves the sign of the operand, right? So like if, if you had a, a, all ones here, and you were to do a, a right shift, so that's negative one uh, in two's complement notation. When you, and if you want to do a right shift of negative one, you would hope you would get negative, well, that's a bad example. Let's do a negative, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Negative four, so that's going to be all ones except the last two. You would hope that shifting negative four would get you negative two. Um, so what you do is you got one, 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 so six ones and then two zeros. You right shift, so that's going to be uh, six ones again and then one zero. And then you want the top bit to be one again, so you get seven ones and a zero, which is two's complement notation for negative two. So that's the idea behind arithmetic versus logical shift, and that's what this line does. Uh, basically chooses whether or not you're preserving the sign bit or not. Um, and speaking of two's complement notation, as I mentioned before, these lines here, so this is an inverter unit, as I said, and this is an increment unit. Um, to, con to change the sign of a, of a value, to negate the sign of, of a value with two's complement notation, you invert and add one. Right? So this is 3. So if I invert and then add 1, I'm going to come over here and you can see this input is now 1, 0, 1, and then all 1s all the way. All 1s. I'm just going to add a lamp there just because I'm tired of not having a lamp there. Right. So it's one, zero, and then all ones. Uh, and so you can see now, so that's that's supposed to be negative three, and if you do it, you know, by hand on paper, you can see it's negative three. You can also do that process by hand. Um, let's see if we invert all the bits, and then add one. This is 
is inverting all the bits and then adding one. Uh, so that's this is supposed to be negative three, and you can see that since it's still being inverted here, you get one, one, and then all zeros, which is three. So this has the effect. Uh, so this is also a negator unit, which allows us to subtract. Um, it allows us to compute b minus a essentially. So. I am going to put this back to three. And could have left that All right, so this is back to three. Hopefully, our inputs should be negative three again. Oh, no, something's stuck. Darn it! Hold on. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong lamp. Sorry. Okay, here we go. One zero. Nope, I'm not. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I swear. I swear. Hold on. That is not correct. No, wait, that's correct. I'm gonna flick with these inputs real quick. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, one, one, all zeros. What? Why is this one? It should not be one, it should be zero. Um, well, it should be one, actually. Let's see if I get three. And I just pass through the inputs. There's still some kinks, as you can see. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, I haven't done any thorough tests because it would take way too long to do that. Alright, somehow I am getting four ones when I do this. Is this... This isn't interfering with anything, is it? That's not stuck. Okay, let's, let's check. Let's check each of you individually. So, this guy's coming in and becoming one somehow. Oh! This is problem with these guys again. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. These repeaters are... They rely on pistons. Um, which are very finicky when there's like... When they're really crowded. Um, I haven't done all the math. Okay, so it was working fine for these inputs. The problem was that these repeaters were stuck, so it was sending... Um, 15 in. So that's good to know that the actual logic isn't broken. It's just those darn repeaters. I gotta find a better instant repeater design. Those keep breaking on me all over the place. And that's not good. Um, okay, so this is 3. Um, all right, I'm gonna make this negative 3 one more time. Look at this. So this is negative 3 now. Alright, 1, 0, 1. And then all ones. So that's negative three. This is fifteen. And as you can see, fifteen plus negative three is, or well, I guess negative three plus fifteen is twelve, just like we want. And you can hit the button to lock in twelve, and then compute twelve plus negative three, and it's nine. You hit it again, and it's six, and then three, and then. One last time. Three minus three is zero, just like we would hope to get. And that is uh, nice. Okay. That is the arithmetic and logic unit. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful.